Okay. So let's. Okay. So in complete. Uh, okay. We move on. So uh, the incomplete data refers to very broad concept. So sometimes we don't have a direct measurement. Sometimes we do have a refusal or, or uh, you know, a decline or non-participating the survey, something like that. Sometimes uh, incomplete data comes from the fact that we have some inaccurate measurement. And sometimes we, we do have a missing data by design. So sampling uh, it can be viewed as, survey sampling can be viewed as a missingness by design. And also we do have some self-selection issue. Suppose we, if we have a online panel survey, then, then uh, it's, it's not really purely random. You have a reason, good reason to participate in that case there's a, some issue of self-selection. So this is one example. So this example actually has, is published in uh, JASA long time ago, but early days, this is not really fully understood at the literature. So, so basically, this is a very typical you know, uh, problem in engineering, in uh, management science. So the client wants to study the uh, what factors are important, what factors are important for, for the managers in terms of the role performance. And the factor could be knowledge and value orientation role satisfaction, task training. Okay. So that, so you can see that these are actually concept, right? This is a uh, concept. It's not really, you cannot really measure knowledge directly, right? You, it, knowledge is a concept, but you cannot really know, there's no direct way measuring one's knowledge, but you can kind of get that information through Questions, right? So, <clears throat> so knowledge is a, is an abstract concept, but still we want to use uh, build some model, right? Using this concept as the covariate, and 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 give some meaningful, you know, interpretation, right? Analysis. So that is a very uh, typical problem, actually. The problem is that. The main only problem is that we don't really measure or uh, have a direct measurement. We don't know x1, x2, x3, x4 directly. But here, yeah. Uh, sorry. So here, you can see number of items. The item means survey questions. OK. So you, you, we have 26 survey questions to measure the knowledge. Okay. We have a survey questions for value orientation. So, so these questions are, are very carefully uh, designed to measure, right? To measure uh, accurately, to make sure that uh, the, uh, the respondent understand the concept clearly and and provide a uh, uh, reasonable measure for, for uh, these uh, concepts. So you can see that the past training, we only have one question. So how many years of education did you get, right? I mean, like uh, 12 year, it's just a high school, six, right? Six and, and six high school, and then 16 year is college education, something like that, you, you can, so the years of education, and that's it, right? I mean, that's the only question 
In that case, so you can, what is the meaning, what would be the meaning of this reliability? That is actually correlation, okay, uh, among these different items. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I scare. So, so the higher, that is why we have a, a one here for one, one item because just one, right? And so there's no real variability. I mean, we, we have, but if you have two questions, right? So you can ask years of education. You can ask actually slightly different person for the same concept, years of education and, and then, you know, what the choice, uh, high school education, college education, something like that, right? And then you want to make sure that these two questions are consistent to each other. So, so that is a way. So that basically gives the how how stable. I mean, how how much variable are there between the measurement? And so, so that is the uh, key component. So you can see that uh, if we, this reliability is low, then that means uh, the, the measurement. So people, so this implies what? Uh, among the 26 questions, sometimes we get high score for one item and but not, not high score in the lower item, right? I mean, the, the other item. Something like that. So, so that gives actually an information about how accurately we can trust the mean. So, <clears throat> uh, in other words, you will, end of the day, you will construct x1, x2, x3, x4, y, and then one, two. 98 because we have a 98 right and so we have a single number for each set but the point is that this number has an error measurement error which is reflected here so then then uh then the point of this paper Basically, is that you need to reflect, take into account the uncertainty in the measurement of x variable in order to make a correct inference. So that is the basic uh, uh, idea behind this paper. So if you naively apply the, the regression, then you will get this uh, analysis. You get the correct this here is the standard error. But the correct one, reflecting that uncertainty, should be this one. So that is the uh, outcome. I mean, that is the correct result. So you can see, for example, if you naively apply uh, ordinary distance square, the effect of past education is very significant, right? So this one divided by this one gives a T value, right? And so T value is about close to 2.8 eight, something, right? I mean, those so significant, right? But here is less significant, right? So, so that, so that means this, the ignoring this uncertainty will maybe uh, give a misleading result. So that is the, uh, that is uh, quite uh, important, especially in the psychometrics, the psychology, Psychometrics, they all, you know, uh, many papers deals with this kind of problem. Okay. Education and, okay. So, data. So, there are two, two different types of data. One, one type is uh, obtained by human, the other one is obtained by non human, right? So, humans are very subject. <laughs> Usually, right? You, you humans are very subtle, so so sometimes people lie, <laughs> right? And sometimes even the blood pressure 
you know, very high variability. In the morning and the evening, they are different from the same person. So that means what? That means it's it's a, a this kind of a, a, you know measurement error problem. Uh, uh, it will be involved. And so if you do not understand the uh, that uh, intrinsic variability in the measurement, in uncertainty in the measurement, you may end up getting a wrong answer, right? So that that is uh, important. I mean, for the physical measurement, no, right? You, if you use a physical experiment and measure measure the weight of a certain matter or some, whatever, they don't change. I mean, you, you, whether you measure it in the morning, whether you measure it in the evening, same, right? Doesn't change. So the physical measurement and experiment are relatively simple because the, the measurement errors are negligible usually. But as but humans are not. So that is, I mean, that's one part of the problem. Uh, this is another typical uh, example of the missing data. So, so it, you know, this is uh, medical, you know, hospital data basically. So you you have a patient coming in, and uh, you know, the hospital clinics measures many different things, right? So. So as asthma limit, group and symptom and reading and age, gender, allergy, something like that. So all, all the variables are believed to be important to do the, this kind of analysis. Uh, the problem is the N. What do you mean by that? That means the effective respondent for this particular item. Uh, this 154, 154, okay. And so they are not, uh, so that's maybe okay, but turns out that this is the actual realization of the uh, missing needs. So, so the total number of set, the total sample size is 154, okay. So among the 154, you have many variables. Those who answered all the questions are only 19 out of 154. Okay. So if you use R or SES, the default option is removed, partially missing. So if you so you you input you read this data with with this sample size and analyze it. In R, not care about not caring about the missing data. The the computation behind the R programming, the default default option is remove all the partial missing data. So 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 you end up just using the nineteen samples only for this analysis, which is only twelve percent. So that. There's a huge, huge loss of information, right? So <clears throat> usually medical data, you, you have uh, some pharmacy, your drug, uh, uh, you have a, suppose you have a, uh, you know, certain, you know, product, and you want to see the, uh, you know, uh, effect, right? And then you need to pay incentive, right? You So suppose we, we give $100 for each patient, so the total cost is 154 times 100, right? So 15K. So you spend 15K dollar and end up using, throwing away all, the, all this money and using only 19. That's a, 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 if you use that and report it, then your boss will be very angry, <laughs> right? Because you're not really doing a good job in utilizing all the information. So. So that is actually quite a practically important issue. And so, so here is a basically, you can later we learn how to analyze this kind of data. And this is the correct, so correct region, correct analysis region. This is a complete case. Complete case means the default option, removing all the, all the partial response. So see, you, 
you can compare the synod error. So if you compare the column of synod error for CC analysis to the column of the synod error for ML analysis, you can see that the standard error is much smaller, right? Which makes sense because we use to hear these standard errors are based on 19, oh, 19 or 19. Sample size of 19. While this one, at least more than 19, right? Because it uses all possible. It's not really clear what is the exact sample size, but uh, because Somewhere between 19 and, and 100 people. Anyway, so we'll, uh, this is critically important problem. So we'll uh, study this uh, very, uh, you know, we'll study this in a couple of weeks later. I have uh, some example. Uh, Real, real consulting example that I I did. Uh, so someone in Korea, statistical, statistics Korea, contacted me to to solve this problem. So so they have a it's a it's a national survey, and they are very interested in estimating the employment status. Okay, so the employment has a three category. Employed, unemployed, and not in labor force. So not in labor force means, for example, housewife, right? So they are, they are not really unemployed, right? They work, but it's not really paid job, right? So so uh, something like that. So employed, so three categories. Anyway, so how, how they collect the data is this. You select sample sample of household and visit, okay? And then nobody answer, then leave a short message, right? I mean, like uh, post it, write down, okay, uh, we we are from Statistics Korea, and we wish to have, you know, get some uh, information from you. Uh, can you call us or uh, something like that, and leave some message, and then, Try their effort, several attempt, up to four times, because they cannot really do this forever, right? They have to stop at some point. All, all the constraints that have practically, so, so basically, first visit, second visit, third visit, fourth visit, and that's it. And then that is the basically the uh, table of the region. So first visit, we got this distribution. Second visit, third visit, fourth visit, and then this is the leftover. Okay. And we cannot really ignore this. The problem is that we cannot really ignore this. Why? Because maybe those who don't respond may have a good reason. Okay. Where? Well, well, why? Because it's a little bit. Sensitive question, right? Employed, are you employed? What I mean, have you, it's not really are you employed. Have you worked in the last week? Have you worked uh, more than one hour or something? I mean, two hour, because employed, there's a several categories, right? Uh, how many hours did you work, right? Suppose you, you worked 10 hours last week. And get paid for 10 hours. Is that can be classified as employed or unemployed? It is employed. But uh, so there's a actually it's a, it's a very it's not really trivial problem, but uh, there's a, a some good categorization. So this is the basically the summary. So what is interesting about this vision? The interesting vision, interesting about this vision is that. This one number increase over time. Okay, what does that mean? But what, what will it suggest? So response propensity seems to be correlated with the unemployment rate. 
which is kind of makes sense, right? Because well, not I don't want to tell, right? I mean, if you are unemployed, then you feel shape. I mean, you are not really proud of being un unemployed, right? I mean, so so maybe there the there is some reason for not uh, responding. So so then question is how you actually you know uh, do the analysis on make on the sum. So that is uh, that's also part of the uh, topic that we are going to address. And this is another another real data example that I I worked on. So this is also interesting. So this is a survey data. Okay, you in the survey you ask questions a lot of things, right? You ask a lot, a lot of things. And one of the questions is your height and weight. Height and weight. In the survey. And then, for some reason, the investigators in the survey becomes interested in uh, the, the how much measurement error are there in this survey question. So, so they actually select a random sample. So among the you know 9,800 original sample, they select 500 <coughs> randomly, and then measure to the physical measurement. Okay. Oops. Ah, oh, sorry, I I missed. That. So let me. Oh, that this this is. I'm sorry. I should somehow I. Uh, okay, that's too bad. Let me see whether I can get the figure. Uh, do I have this? Yeah, sorry, I, I missed this part. I will <laughs> update it. Uh, okay. What does that mean? So this is reported survey. And this is what? The physical measurement. Okay. So if, so this is the 45 degree, I mean, so the weight, there's some variation. So for example, this guy, it's not really honest, right? He, uh, this guy has a, the true weight is this one, but exaggerated. Uh, the height is also more interesting because the height, uh, it goes all the point uh, uh, above the line. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, I, I don't know. I, I, so ask yourself, did you always, always, always report your height accurately? Uh, I'm not. I'm really exaggerating. That's reflected here. So anyway. Okay. Yeah. So this is the outline. Uh, so uh, this is, I plan to add a little bit on uh, causal inference. Causal inference is very hot research area in these days, and uh, it has a real good connection with this data. So, so I thought I would uh, include it just uh, to improve our knowledge. Anyway, this is the uh, plan. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to. 